Okay, so we do have one uh, orientation representation. It is the rotation matrix. Let us see some alternative uh, orientation representations. We are not satisfied by staying at the rotation <coughs> matrix uh, orientation representation. It has some drawbacks. Okay, it's not easy to understand a rotation by looking at three by three matrix of numbers. It's not easy to represent or to visualize, for example, one rotation. In some uh, in some uh, specific domains, uh, we will see which one. There are some more intuitive, a more easy way to represent the rotation, and then. Uh, Sometimes, and then there are some drawbacks. In particular, there is one orientation representation that is very difficult to, to visualize for us, for, for a man, but is what is going to be used in the code, in your program, for several reasons. Okay? So now we are going to, to check alternative uh, orientation representation. Excuse me. So the drawback of the rotation is that uh, it is complicated to understand immediately. We will, we will oh. see, it's not the only one. We will see later a recap with the drawbacks of the various kind of orientation representations. Uh, one is that you have nine parameters. And if you just have uh, a small robot, uh, it's not a problem. But if you have uh, a... Uh, computer graphic applications with thousands and thousands of rotation of uh, objects, nine parameters uh, is, uh, I mean, <coughs> three times uh, three parameters. So it could be useful to have a more compact representation. Oh. Not for robots, because robots, you have only the degrees of freedom of the, of the robots, but for graphic applications, yes. So let's see first the so-called oil angles. In order to represent uh, an orientation, we need uh, three independent parameters. So let us consider let us consider all the possible uh, permutations Combinations. Please. Let us consider all the possible combinations of uh, the three elementary rotations. Okay? So <coughs> the combinations are 27. Sorry. The combinations are 27. Okay? Some of them are trivial. For example, if I just put Rx after Rx, it's, it's twice the same, twice the same uh, rotation. In the end, uh, all the possible uh, meaningful uh, combinations are 12. We are going to consider only one sample of uh, current frame and one sample of a fixed frame. Okay? So Z, Y, Z in current frame and roll pitch show. R, P, Y is roll pitch show. Maybe you already heard roll pitch show in, uh, in other domain. Okay, so the definition of Z, Y, Z is current frame rotation in this order. Z, Y, Z. Okay? So first a rotation around Z of a certain angle, then current uh, rotation <coughs> around Y, and current rotation around Z. If I just use the definition of the elementary rotations that we saw <coughs> earlier, the overall rotation matrix is this one, where you have, we have the convention that C, uh, lower speed of C, is cosine C, just a compact rotation. Okay? Of course, I don't, I don't need
need to I don't need to know by year is one. I don't care. I know that I'm able to write a very complex function that <coughs> with input the three values of the angles and by knowing that I'm, I'm talking about a z y z orientation representation output me a rotation matrix. Okay. Okay. But then, uh, if I do have a rotation matrix, if from the rotation matrix I want to extract the three angles, what shall I do? So the so-called inverse problem. I have uh, nine numbers. Okay. So here I just have nine numbers, and I want to extract the angles. I know that the convention is z y z. Well. I look at the rotation, I say, okay, I have cosinus theta here, I can apply the uh, cosinus uh, Then here I have uh, cosinus phi sinus theta, and here sinus phi sinus theta. I can make the division between those two numbers, and I have the tangent of uh, phi. And then the inverse tangent function, and I have the value of phi. Okay. Let's do that way. But uh, do you know the difference between uh, Atan and Atan 2? Uh, because Atan mm -hmm. is how many dimensions? Do you know the tangent if I want to do, to, to do the tangent of theta? Do you know how to do it? Yes? Sinus or cosinus? Tangent of theta. So in zero is? In, in, in zero? Zero. What is the value of the function in zero? For theta is equal to zero. Zero? Zero. 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 Then grows. Uh, pi over two. Pi over two. Sorry? Pi over two. Do you know how to write the atom function? is the Minus uh, p over 2 to 
d over 2. Okay? Okay, but uh, in order to compute this function, I have to impose that uh, 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 the two elements are different from 0. Otherwise, I'm in a, in a division by 0 operation. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the output uh, <coughs> that I'm going to obtain is for theta included in 0 pi. Here I have a round bracket. It means excluded 0 and excluded pi. If, pi, if uh, theta is uh, in minus pi 0, I have 3 different uh, equations. It's not important that there are 3 because I already see something that I, I totally dislike. What if theta is equal to 0? What can I do if theta is equal to 0? I have the rotation matrix. And then, what is the value of z, y, z? Let, let us come back here and see what I'm asking for. So I have a rotation around z <coughs> of a certain number of feet. Then zero, and then another rotation around z. z. It means that uh, I have two rotations around the same unit vector. Mm -hmm. It means that it's not possible to understand the total rotation, who was phi, it was c. Mm -hmm. This is the intuition. This, uh, so, sorry, this is the interpretation. Mathematically, I see that uh, for theta equal 0 or pi, if I give you the nine numbers, you will never be able to solve it for the three angles. Okay? You just play around with, with the sinus and cosinus, you play around and you will never be able to solve it. Because it's a, a problem that cannot be solved. And so we are facing a so-called <coughs> Representations in right. I was so happy to start uh, with the three numbers to represent an orientation because it's a minimal representation. Okay? In nine uh, numbers of the rotation matrix uh, are, are too many. I don't like I don't like it. Okay, so I picked up Z when Z. And there is a problem. The problem of representation singularity. Pay attention, the word singularity will come back several times in this class, but with different meaning. This is representation singularity. Okay? So representation is important. So it's not it's not nice. I mean the fact that I have a, a representation singularity is totally not nice because this is my end effect, and my end effect can have uh, all kind of orientations. I don't want to, to, I don't want to pay attention to something like that. When you have uh, a different a division by zero, okay, you think uh, at the value zero, but the problem is not in zero. The problem uh, is when you have uh, epsilon. Uh, uh, smaller than one, much smaller than one, very small value. Because here you have numerical properties. So I don't want to control my robot by resorting to an orientation representation that can suffer from numerical problems in a, in a configuration that I don't know. Okay? Because it can, it can arise in all of the intermediate rotations, for example, not only at the end of it. Well, Okay, so Z Y Z is not good. Let us move to another one. All minima, it can be demonstrated, we are not going to do mathematically, that all the minimal orientation representation suffer from a representation similar. So this is a drawback that is common to all the minimal representation. But we are going to study another one as well. We will see why, okay? The Rohr-Picheyot. Rohr-Picheyot 
uh, in Italian is Rolio, Beccheggio e Imbardata. Rolpicelio is uh, the aero or nautical uh, terms for those three rotation in fixed frame around that white <coughs> so roll this is the airplane this is the advancing airplane roll is this moment here pitch is this one this is the front of the boat of the airplane and yo is this one okay and this is the gravity and this is the okay? roll yo and pitch so the rotation is given by the three elementary rotation in reverse order because do you remember I mean this is in fixed frame and this is the result it's very similar to the other one there are Osiris and Sinus so it's not different from the other one it suffered from the representation singularity yes so why we are going to use it well because in the aeronautical field it's very easy to understand the orientation of a rigid body if uh, rod and pitch are close to zero that is what you uh, what you expect from your airplane or from your underwater vehicle roll and pitch and the singularity is uh, for pitch of plus or minus pi over 2. So the singularity arises when you already have lost your vehicle for other reasons, because your airplane will not be mm -hmm. safely in this position, also the underwater vehicle. Okay? So in uh, the quad rotor control, uh, control rows, they use raw pitch here. It's not a problem. Except specific applications, you will not work with pitch of, uh, of 90 degrees. I'm not going to the details of the inverse problem. I don't care about the inverse problem. Whenever I eventually we need to do it, I will study those equations. Now, what is important is the concept. Okay? All minimal representation of the orientation suffers from representation singularity. They can rise in different values. Theta here is uh, plus or minus power 2, and the other was 0 or 5, but they all suffer from this problem. Rol pitch AO is the only one that can be used in specific applications, not in anthropomorphic robotics, not in industrial robotics. So I don't want to, for, to limit the movement of my but we can use it for quadrotor control, for, for underwater vehicle, and so on. Okay. Another one. Axis angle. If I want to describe the operation of my end effect in a welding operation, for example, what I say, okay, you're a robot, I don't care, you, you control the robot, I don't care at what you do. I do want that your robot comes here and make a welding with this orientation. Okay? What does it mean with this orientation? <coughs> I'm giving the unit vector. For me representing the tool that is coming here. Okay? So this is a very intuitive way to provide the orientation. For example as a requirement an operator <coughs> Say, okay, you have to come with the tool in this configuration and show you the approaching direction. You have to glue, and uh, your end effector needs, when, when you have to deposit the glue, sometimes you have to make some movement in order to facilitate the falling on the glue. And just describe uh, the movement in this way. So it's very intuitive. And we come to the axis under repetition. We now want to use four parameters, okay? Because with three we failed. So well, let us try with four. And the definition is very, is very intuitive, it's very simple. I give you a unit vector and an angle around it. And this is the rotation. It's very intuitive, okay? Unit vector, so three coordinates, 
with norm one and an angle. Okay. So the rotation matrix is function of theta is a scalar, this one, and r, this is a vector, it's both of this, okay, three by one. Now the way you obtain it is a little bit uh, not, not very not very intuitive. Let us skip this one. Just you can think at it a little bit uh, uh, later on, but uh, let us skip because what is important <coughs> is that by giving a unit vector and an angle, I'm able to compute the rotation matrix. Okay? Okay, so I'm happy because I pretend I solved the, the, the representation singularity problem. I actually, I don't. Because if I make my nice computation, given nine numbers, and try to extract the, the uh, axis angular representation, it turns out that I have to skip the theta value zero equal zero name. Okay, so no rotation. This is a representation singularity. So I'm very I'm very sad because I'm, I'm not going to the into the details, okay? I don't want to know how to compute this one. It doesn't matter. This is let me say simple algebraic nonlinear algebraic equation. Simple uh, in the sense that it's not conceptually complicated. But what is important is that I move from three to four uh, parameters. <laughs> I'm very happy because I do have the intuition, uh, the, 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 I do have the, the intuitive uh, uh, interpretation of the numbers, very nice, but I still have uh, the representation singularity for theta equal z. So I haven't solved my problem. We have to move to something a little bit more complicated. That will be our last uh, orientation representation because with that one we will uh, finish our need. We will uh, satisfy our need. The unit quaternion uh, introduced by Hamilton as an extension to the complex number, so not to represent the orientation. But it turns out that it's a very nice way to represent the orientation. And this is a stone that is uh, in somewhere in Edinburgh, okay, with the, where he first uh, find the, the, the idea to extend the complex numbers. So now I have a four parameters representation with the, the symbol uh, is usually the calligraphic Q uppercase, whatever, no, it's not important. Pay attention here. <coughs> the delimiter is not uh, the square bracket. Okay? Because this is not a vector. This is uh, given by one scalar and a vector. Okay? So this is a set. This is the reason why. I'm not using the square graph. Mm -hmm. Okay. The definition from the axis angle is totally not intuitive. The scalar part is, is not theta, it's cosinus uh, theta over 2, and the vector part is epsilon equal r sinus theta over 2. So, totally not intuitive. <laughs> Four parameters, there is one constraint, unit quaternion. It means that if I make the <coughs> if I make the the, the, um, the norm is unitary. I haven't written <coughs> because it is not a vector. Okay? So I don't want to use a wrong notation. I write here, the components, but not. <coughs> well, this is a, a dimensional, okay? And I have my nice 
rotation are given by proper combination of the operation. It's not important uh, to know the individual element. I will never work with the individual element. I will, work, will always have a function to do it. Okay. Okay. What about the inverse problem? Yes, the inverse problem is always well defined for all the angles. Okay? It's always been well defined. Look here, assuming eta larger than zero is not a problem because if you change the, the quaternion with the tan and r and minus tan and r, r is the same quaternion and the same if you change the sign of the quaternion. So this is totally not a restriction. What is important, I will have always a solution with the eta larger than zero. What is important that this is always defined. This is always well defined. But I'm losing totally the intuition. If I, if I have uh, four numbers uh, of a rotation, I will never understand uh, visually what rotation is. Okay? Four numbers here is totally, is totally not impossible, but it's very difficult to understand. But I have some nice property of the quaternion. If, if I have the inverse of the rotation matrix, this is uh, represented by the quaternion with the vector part with the opposite sign. So it's very easy. If I have a quaternion, I want to have uh, the inverse rotation, I just change sign to the vector part. I save a lot of, uh, of uh, computations. If I want to compose rotations, I need to make, uh, <coughs> with the rotation matrices, I need to make um, uh, matrix multiplications. With quaternions, I have uh, <coughs> no, a way in symbolic form to do it, very common line of function that does it. So it's useful from the computational aspect. Pay attention when, uh, whenever you use uh, libraries or whatever, there is not a unique convention of who is the first, the scalar or the vector. Okay? So if you use a certain library and you have uh, four numbers, first the scala and then the, the vector and change library it will, you can have a, a, a semantic error that you never find okay. it is for, for based on a real experience, real life the syntax error you can find, semantic errors etc. it's a mess ok, so, recap of pro and con with, with some new concepts intuition rotation matrix Euler angles, axis angles, and quaternions. The intuition, they're all more or less intuitive. I don't find the rotation to be so intuitive, but hey, it's, it's considered as an intuitive orientation. Euler angles, yes. Axis angle, yes. Quaternions, no. Not for me, not for the people that I know. Chain, chain means uh, composition of rotation. Well, for all angles, uh, for axing up, axis angle, I haven't told you anything because there is not a systematic way. You have to, to come back to the rotation, make the composition, and come back to oil. So it's not very, it's not very uh, convenient <coughs> from the computational aspect. Memory, for us, it will not be a problem because we will work with, a, with simple robots. This is a problem with huge uh, graphical applications where you have uh, plenty of uh, facets and objects uh, with all kind of rotations, okay? Not for us. Then, <coughs> nu, n, u, n, what does it mean? The numerical properties. A rotation has uh, six constraints. And if you work with rotations, and then after a while, 
you ask for the norm of the determinant is not one, okay? Because you have round off errors that propagate. It's, it's, it's very uh, software issue. With quaternions, it's much easier. When you work with quaternions, you always norma normalize with the norm one. But you have four elements with norm one. With rotation, you have nine elements is a rotation. And normalize is not uh, as trivial as with quaternions. So this is more robust from the numerical aspect. Okay, representation, singularities, rotation and quaternions they don't have, the other two they do have. And then uh, derivative, it's here, but we don't have the concept here. <laughs> we will have it when we will make uh, the differential kinematics. Okay? So I I decided to have it here so that you will have one place with uh, a compact recap of coin toss. But now we haven't talked about, so just ignore for the moment. Okay. If you look at the documentation of OpenGL, that is a, a computer graphic library, it's not a robotics library, in the documentation they write use uh, other angles for the graphical user interface and use quaternions for your internal computations. This is a suggestion by a community totally different from robotics. But this is not a robotic problem. This is a common issue when you have to handle orientations. Okay? So it's uh, the way it is. Transformation among the representations all the software libraries as few functions that tra make the transformation. We will do it uh, in our practice in order to, no, to practice, but uh, it's, very, it's very easy, it's very uh, common. Okay, uh, we stop here for today. Uh, questions? No? I'll see you.